the 10 most terrifying discoveries of World War II, Hitler's unknown secrets of death, and the true reason for Nazi soldiers' unbeatable success, according to statistics, World War II was a global man-made disaster that spanned six years, involving over a hundred countries and regions, with a death toll of over 60 million people, with the discovery of more and more war relics and the unveiling of long-hidden secrets. Our understanding of this war has been profoundly impacted. Today, let's explore the 10 most terrifying and astonishing discoveries of World War II, delving into this historical world of heroism and tragedy together. In 1959, under the guise of polar research, American engineers constructed an underground base in Greenland. They claimed it was for climate research, having drilled through the ice sheet. However, their deeper objective was to excavate permafrost tunnels beneath the Greenland ice cap to store hundreds of missiles and test the launching of missiles directly from under the ice. Under the secrecy of the Danish government, this base operated until 1967. However, engineers eventually concluded that the thickness of the Greenland ice cap would continue to increase, potentially burying their research project permanently. Thus, they abandoned the base beneath the ice and hastily disposed of a pile of toxic materials. The current climate has undergone significant changes, with the rate of ice formation falling far behind the rate of melting. Although these toxic substances currently remain buried deep within the snow, considering the current rate of snow melt, it won't be long before the ice begins to melt. There is a possibility that a large amount of contamination, including wastewater, diesel, and even nuclear waste, is still present at the site. Once these pollutants flow into the surrounding waters of Greenland as the ice melts, the environmental damage caused will be immeasurable. As of now, there is no consensus between the United States and Denmark regarding the responsibility for cleaning up this site. The Danish government and the U.S. military have both refrained from providing a definitive response. This remains a mystery to this day. During World War II, the United States created a remarkable special unit known as the Ghost Army. Unlike traditional military units, this army did not recruit soldiers but instead recruited artists, architects, and actors. They were designers, engineers, and members of the U.S. Army's 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, commonly referred to as the Ghost Army. Comprising 1,100 individuals, the Ghost Army operated from their base, where you would casually see four seemingly ordinary American soldiers effortlessly lifting a tank. By now, you may have guessed their mission, to deceive the enemy by any means necessary. Leveraging the artistic talents and technical ingenuity of their team members, the Ghost Army created various props such as inflatable tanks, inflatable jeeps, and inflatable cannons. They also utilized sound equipment to play pre-recorded sounds of troop movements and simulated radio dispatch orders, employing tactics that aimed to divert the enemy's attention. The existence of this unit remained highly classified for a long time until the 1990s when some of the information was declassified, revealing their operations to the public. In 2020, the National World War II Museum in the United States hosted its first touring exhibition dedicated to the Ghost Army. The Bismarck battleship was a massive warship built by Nazi Germany. Its design and construction began in 1930 and took 16 years before it was officially launched and set sail. This battleship, hailed as the largest, most powerful, and most advanced in German history, embodied the dreams of German military industrialization. Adolf Hitler himself even delivered a speech to commemorate the naming of this vessel. However, despite being a highly anticipated warship, it met its demise on its maiden voyage, sinking just nine days after being launched. The sinking of the Bismarck had a significant impact on the European theater of war, foreshadowing Hitler's downfall. The true cause of the Bismarck sinking has long been a subject of intense debate. At the time, there was no conclusive evidence to determine whether it was sunk by the British Navy or deliberately scuttled by the Germans themselves. However, in 1989, underwater archaeologist Robert Ballard discovered the wreckage of the Bismarck at a depth of approximately 4,800 meters. Five British research teams immediately rushed to the scene, aiming to uncover the true cause of its sinking. Additionally, three neutral American expeditions also joined the investigation. 
After two years of research, Dr. McClellan from the American expedition concluded that the hull of the Bismarck remained remarkably intact and showed no visible signs of enemy gunfire. From this, it can be inferred that the crew of the Bismarck chose to scuttle the ship rather than be captured. The fervent patriotic individuals in Britain have consistently refused to accept this explanation, clinging to their own version of the truth. Only those who experienced the battle firsthand can truly recount the events. The Amber Room, commissioned by Frederick I of Prussia in 1709, was a magnificent chamber designed to emulate the luxurious lifestyle of the French King Louis XIV. It was created by the most outstanding architects of the time and covered an area of approximately 55 square meters. The room consisted of 12 amber panels and 12 pilasters, all made of amber, which was even more valuable than gold at the time. The entire amber room weighed at least six tons and was adorned with diamonds, gemstones, and silver foil. It could be disassembled and reassembled into various shapes, representing the pinnacle of art and craftsmanship in the 18th century. It was hailed as the eighth wonder of the world. In 1716, as a gesture of goodwill towards Russia, Frederick I reluctantly presented the Amber Room to Peter the Great, the Emperor of Russia. After its arrival in Russia, the Amber Room underwent further renovations, becoming even more luxurious and exquisite. The renovated Amber Room was located in the Catherine Palace near St. Petersburg, covering an area of 180 square meters. During World War II, Nazi Germany, known for its relentless looting of the occupied territories, had its eyes on the Amber Room. Moreover, in the minds of the Nazis, the Amber Room rightfully belonged to Prussia. In 1942, after successfully occupying the town of Königsberg, the Nazis dismantled and packed the Amber Room, transporting it by train to the Amber Museum in Königsberg, which was located in present-day Kaliningrad, Russia. Three years later, in February 1945, the Soviet Red Army invaded Königsberg. The Soviet government never forgot about this rare treasure. However, despite extensive searches conducted by search teams and international explorers in the 1980s, the Amber Room had remained elusive. People have always believed that the Amber Room is still buried somewhere in Königsberg. However, in recent years, there have been rumors suggesting that the Amber Room is no longer in Königsberg but was secretly transported and concealed in an amber mine in Austria. The whereabouts of this once revered treasure, hailed as the eighth wonder of the world, remain a mystery to this day. The Enigma machine, used by Germany during World War II, was an extremely complex and sophisticated encryption device that was considered nearly impossible to crack at the time. Why is that? The Enigma machine employed multiple rotors and a complex circuitry system to encrypt information. Each key press would cause the rotors to rotate by a certain number of positions, altering the arrangement of the circuitry and changing the output character. This meant that the same character inputted at different times would produce different encrypted characters, greatly increasing the complexity of decryption. It is estimated that there were approximately 1.5 times 10 to the power of 20, 150 followed by 19 zeros, possible combinations for each encryption. In other words, even if you knew the workings of the Enigma machine, manually decrypting it would be an almost impossible task. However, amidst these complex machines, there were clever minds at work. In 1940, the British intelligence agency known as MI6 purchased a secretive mansion, later known as Bletchley Park. Here, nearly 10,000 people worked tirelessly to crack the Enigma, with the collaboration of the brightest minds in the field of codebreaking and the brilliant insights of Alan Turing. Eventually, they succeeded in inventing a machine called the bomb, which was referred to as the precursor to modern computers. When a dozen or so bombs were ticking away at Bletchley Park, they were able to decipher the Germans' daily encryption key within an hour. Churchill, not wanting to raise suspicion, deliberately allowed the enemy to succeed a few times, even knowing that the Germans were about to bomb Coventry but refrained from taking action. However, in crucial battles, such as the Battle of Britain, the British forces emerged victorious. The Germans, in fact, fell into a trap due to their greed for small gains. During the darkest moments when almost all of Europe was under Nazi control, the small British Isles became the last fortress of the Allies, holding steadfast until the turning point of the war. 
It is said that Turing's code-breaking efforts with Enigma at least hastened the end of World War II by two years, saving millions of lives. The International Tracing Service Archives, located in Bad Arolsen, Germany, is an important archive managed by the International Committee of the Red Cross. Initially established to help reunite families separated during World War II and provide information on missing persons, this archive holds immense historical significance for researching and understanding the war. The archive houses over 30 million documents related to victims and survivors under the Nazi regime, including but not limited to lists of concentration camp inmates, prisoner records, and forced laborers' information. These records serve as both historical evidence and crucial evidence for investigating war crimes and holding perpetrators accountable. It was worth noting that the majority of the archive's materials were original documents, possessing high historical and academic value. Furthermore, this extensive database played a vital role in post-war research and compensation efforts. Its existence allowed for the verification of victims' identities while respecting privacy considerations. It was not until 2007 that these archives were fully opened to the public. In recent years, as the number of survivors from the Holocaust continues to decline, the archive launched a digitization project in 2016 to make these records accessible to a global audience. Through initiatives like Every Name Counts, millions of victims' stories can continue to be shared. As a witness to one of the darkest periods in history, the International Tracing Service Archives serves as a testament to the atrocities that occurred during World War II. During World War II, Japan engaged in burning, killing, and looting in various Southeast Asian countries, plundering a large amount of wealth. According to conservative estimates, the value of the treasures stolen by Japan exceeded trillions of dollars, including over 6,000 tons of gold, as well as a large number of diamonds, jade, jewelry, antiques, and artworks. However, as the war drew to a close, the Japanese invaders realized that it was no longer possible to transport these treasures back to Japan. Therefore, they had no choice but to bury them on site. It is said that General Tomoyuki Yamashita, known as the Tiger of Malaya, was the implementer of this burial plan. Hence, this batch of treasures is also known as Yamashita's gold. After the war, Yamashita was executed as a war criminal in Manila, the capital of the Philippines. The gold and other treasures he looted and could not take away became a mystery. The story of Yamashita's gold has been widely spread through various books, movies, and documentaries, becoming more and more mysterious. Due to the lack of reliable sources and conclusive evidence, historians generally hold doubts about its authenticity. After all, the Japanese government has no official documents proving the existence of such a massive treasure. However, regardless of its authenticity, after World War II, many people searched for and excavated the treasures in the mountains of the Philippines. Even the former President Marcos was no exception, as he ordered searches in 172 places in the Philippines. At the same time, someone searched for the treasure and claimed to have found the location of Yamashita's gold in 1983, specifically underground in Fort Santiago. He claimed that he would soon retrieve these treasures. However, even after he stepped down from power, people never saw the so-called treasures. When Marcos stepped down in 1986, a government investigation revealed that he owned billions of dollars in assets. It is widely believed that most of this wealth was acquired through corruption and bribery. However, the Philippine government has always believed that a portion of Marcos's wealth was from Yamashita's gold. USS Indianapolis was a highly decorated giant warship of the United States Navy. On July 30, 1945, after delivering components for the Little Boy atomic bomb to Tinian Island, the ship was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine in the Philippine Sea. In just 12 minutes, this 186-meter giant warship sank to the depths of the sea, under the cover of darkness. Most of the officers and crew members on board, approximately 900 men, were floating on the surface of the water, many of them shirtless or wearing only their underwear. However, due to a series of mistakes and coincidences, the sinking of USS Indianapolis did not immediately come to light. 
Three days passed, and the soldiers continued to float on the surface, suffering from hypothermia, dehydration, and hunger. These life-threatening issues surrounded them, but even more terrifyingly, the area was infested with swarms of sharks. The bodies of the fallen soldiers floating in the water attracted a large number of sharks, and the screams filled the air. The blood of the sacrificed soldiers stained the sea, with one or two hundred men losing their lives every day. This horrifying situation continued until the fourth day when a Navy patrol plane discovered them while conducting a patrol in the nearby area. The U.S. military promptly initiated a rescue operation, but it was too late. Only 317 people survived this tragedy. The wreckage of the warship remained undiscovered for over 70 years. It wasn't until December 20, 2018, when a private research team led by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen used advanced technology to finally locate the resting place of those who sacrificed their lives in the war at a depth of approximately 5,500 meters in the Philippine Sea. On that day, the entire crew of USS Indianapolis was posthumously awarded the Navy Gold Life-Saving Medal. The warship has now become one of the most iconic sunken ships of World War II. In the bustling city of Berlin, Germany, there is an ordinary-looking parking lot. However, beneath this parking lot lies a secret from World War II, the Führer Bunker, the final refuge of Adolf Hitler. On January 16, 1945, as the Nazi regime was crumbling, Hitler made the fateful decision to seek shelter in this underground complex. From then on, he rarely appeared in public, and the Führer bunker, initially designed as an air raid shelter, became his permanent sanctuary. In the dim and damp environment of the bunker, Hitler conducted military briefings, made crucial decisions, and even married his girlfriend, Eva Braun. Ultimately, Hitler and his wife took their own lives inside the bunker, signaling the collapse of Nazi Germany and the end of the European theater of World War II. Due to concerns that the site would become a pilgrimage site for neo-Nazis, the German government has kept the exact location of the Führer bunker undisclosed. In its place, inconspicuous apartment buildings, offices, and parking lots have been built, as if the existence of the bunker has been deliberately forgotten. It wasn't until June 2006 that the location was officially recognized as Hitler's place of death. In the course of history, the unremarkable parking lot conceals an extraordinary past, evoking a sense of melancholy. However, just when everyone thought the story had come to an end, conspiracy theorists emerged, claiming that Hitler had secretly escaped from the Führer bunker and his whereabouts remained unknown. They even presented a map of his alleged escape route, accompanied by a photo of a golden coffin. Supposedly, the coffin was discovered in a swampy forest, bearing inscriptions that suggested its association with the Nazi regime. Inside the coffin was a seemingly uncorrupted body bearing a striking resemblance to Hitler. While most people considered the photo to be a forgery, there has always been endless speculation about the final fate of this war fanatic. Now, watching this video, I wonder, what are your thoughts on the matter? During World War II, Nazi Germany's lightning-fast invasions of Poland, the occupation of France, and the aerial bombardment of Britain during the Battle of Britain were truly remarkable military achievements. The German soldiers of that time were not only formidable but could be described as fanatical. Anyone who came into contact with the German army at that time was amazed by them. They seemed like machines, tireless and relentless. They would march behind armored vehicles for an entire day, arriving at their destination without needing rest, ready to immediately engage in combat. What was the source of their seemingly inexhaustible power? It was later discovered, as more information came to light after the war, that the German soldiers on the battlefield were actually collectively medicated. In 1930s Germany, if there were to be a ranking of the best-selling drugs, it would undoubtedly be a drug called Weibmuth, which was initially introduced to the German civilian market. The German population did not know the composition of this new drug, they only knew that it was cheap and effective. It allowed laborers to work continuously for days on end, and long-distance drivers could drive through the night without resting. The appearance of this miracle drug quickly caught the attention of the military, which immediately decided to procure and mass-produce it for German soldiers. They named it Energy Agent. 
So, before every battle, the soldiers would take a small white pill. When the drug took effect, they would feel a cool sensation on their scalps, their senses would become heightened, and they would radiate a chilling aura of alertness. They felt like a sharpened arrow, with sleepiness dissipating in an instant and their fighting spirit soaring. During the period from April to December 1939, just one pharmaceutical company, Balsan, supplied the Nazi army and air force with 29 million tablets of the drug, known as OBM. As the Nazi commander-in-chief, Adolf Hitler himself, was reported to be a drug enthusiast. According to German scholar Norman Oller in his book Blitz, Drugs in Nazi Germany, by the end of the war, Hitler's drug supplies had run out, and he experienced severe serotonin and dopamine withdrawal reactions, along with symptoms of paranoia. He suffered from sleep disorders, severe tooth decay, tremors, renal failure, and delusions. It is understood that all of these were caused by the medication he initially took to treat chronic illnesses. In the end, the drug that had once made the Nazi military invincible ultimately sent Hitler and his army straight to hell. All right, that concludes the content of this episode. I'm curious to know which of these 10 astonishing discoveries from World War II impressed you the most. You are welcome to share your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.